Which cheap and mass-produced item is stupendously well-engineered? I really like BIC products. Lighters, ballpoint pens, razor blades etc. They're all very robust despite being cheap mass-produced plastic items. Until this moment, I had never connected that these BIC products were all from the same company. Amazing that they've produced a variety of incredibly cheap but still reasonable quality items. Toilets. I've been a plumber 20 years and very little has changed, or needed to. Minimal upkeep, cheap and easy repair, very long life. Hey so what is the difference between my house toilet that just flushes like regular and a commercial toilet in like a doctor's building where if you flush it it will also suck the clothing right off you? Is there a pressure regulator behind the toilet or something? Ooh this is a fun one. In your home toilet you have a tank filled with water, and when you flush it allows the water to dump into the bowl and flood it causing it to siphon out. Commercial toilets have either a manual or powered valve that allows full water pressure to blast into the bowl for a set time. It all but ensures it'll flush since anything in the bowl is blended, but it's a more expensive design. Whistle. For a few cents, you can be heard in the middle of nowhere for nearly a mile. Much louder than your voice. Great if you are lost. The intermodal shipping container, aka the conics box. There are millions of the damned things all over the world, and use every single day. They are stackable, can be locked together, attach readily to ships, truck trailer frames, and rail cars, and can bear enormous loads. The cost of their manufacture compared to their economic use value over their useful lives is next to nothing. And there are so many varieties. Its whole ecosystem of compatible equipment. Tank, reefer, flat rack, silo, just to name a few. I just hate that they are so narrow. 20 centimeters more and they would be fully compatible with the EPAL standard. The next best thing after the shipping container. There are even so-called PW container. Pallet wide. Just that you can use them to haul pallets via EG ferry. It's a minor inconvenience and rather irrelevant but it bugs me to this day. I was on a vessel a few weeks back when they were doing the lashing on the containers and being in between containers stacked about 20 high would have been so much more terrifying if they hadn't all fit together so nicely. It's not just that it's a good box. The brilliance is that we were all smart enough to agree on the one true box. One box to rule them all. Zip ties, such a simple piece of plastic but so versatile. I have one of the old-fashioned chain-link fences, some of the fasteners on the middle poles broke and in high winds the fence was swaying like crazy. A half dozen zip ties on the three posts and it doesn't budge and nobody even knows they're there. My son rebuilt the front of his car with them time and again. He's a genius with a zip tie. With not hitting the car in front of him, not so much. Zip tie bumper stitches are pretty common with drift kids. I drove a zip tie bumper Lexus SC after a delivery truck crushed it and fucked off. The car was a 99. This was in 2010. I guess now I understand why guys in modified Civics kept wanting to race. The brick. Made out of mud and lasts for centuries and the way it can distribute load for large buildings. The lighter. Spontaneously ignite fire basically whenever you want. Specifically, Bic lighters are incredibly reliable. You can find one on the ground that's been outside for months and they still work. Cheaper disposables break in a million ways and more expensive refillable lighters will leave you disappointed if you store them, but you can always keep a big handy and know it'll work when you need it. I need to buy a pack of colorful pens for my daughter's back-to-school pack. Aight, we got you. I also want to create fire with my fingertips, know how I can do that. You're not going to believe this. I have a women's model Zippo that my grandfather got my grandmother sometime around the Korean War has gone through hell and back, including being underwater and then under sludge for about two weeks straight thanks to Hurricane Agnes in 1972. I have yet to have it fail on me. Zippos are great, I just wish it was better sealed. I don't use it often enough, by my next use all the lighter fluid has evaporated. This is exactly why I have a couple of Zippos that never make it out of the drawer. They're cool, but I don't smoke, and I only start a fire or light a grill every few weeks. If I have to pull a can of fuel out, I'm just going to reach for the bic next to it. Or when it leaks out in your back pocket and makes your ass itch for an hour. Soda slash beer cans. The design has existed for decades with few changes. It's a way of using a relatively small amount of cheap metal to withstand the pressure of carbonated beverages with a reliable opening mechanism. During pandemic I also noticed that some companies stopped using thicker material on the upper ridge of the can, probably due to supply shortages. They instead used a sort of stepped system that appeared to be almost as strong. Every few years you will see the can design change as they find additional areas to reduce the use of aluminum. You can still find newly manufactured cans in the old designs in some of the more remote areas with less demand, like Hawaii. It's cheaper to create and fill cans on the island than import them, 
but the payback from updating to the newest conforming machines isn't quite there for the volume of cans they manufacture, so they get hand-me-downs and cast-offs. Ball bearings. Even the cheapest ball bearings with the loosest tolerances are still made in the 1050 micron range of tolerance. It only gets better from there. A Beck spec anyways. Edit, when I say ball bearings I'm loosely referring to the races and rolling elements of any roller element bearing. Ball, taper, needle, cylinder, etc. Two races, one race no race, etc. Absolutely. I deal with them all day, in an industrial capacity. The difference between an SKF bearing and a no-brand eBay special is a lot. Most expensive one I've personally installed was like $25,000. Balls gave way to stuff like needle, roller, and spherical bearings as well which are also neat in themselves. It's all ball bearings these days. Not exactly cheap, but I'm impressed that I can have a ceiling fan run on high for 15 years straight and not have it explode on me. I seriously startled myself when I realized the only time my ceiling fan had been off since I moved in was when the power went out. You should turn it off to clean it once in a while. It gets sticky dust on it. And to switch direction for summer slash winter. Edit, winter mode is also useful in the summer if you have a second floor and open all of the upstairs windows as it will help push the heat out. I do this for the evenings, then shut the windows early in the morning and flip the fan back to normal. What? One direction to move air upwards for winter and the other direction to move air downwards for summer. Damn, if you were Korean you'd be dead. Can confirm, am Korean. One night I slept alive with the fan on, the next morning I woke up dead. The transistor. I remember how amazed we were in 1985 to see a chip with 68,000 transistors. Now they're at 68 billion. My favorite part was in school my professor talking about how they used to do the layouts on transparencies by hand. Or how during Apollo the guidance aspect of the program was buying up a significant portion of the national production capacity of transistors. A lot of the computers were not even transistor-based if I remember correctly. And since the integrated circuit wasn't around yet, they were the individual fingertip-sized transistors if I have my timeline correct. The humble corrugated cardboard box. It's lightweight, strong, splash-resistant, somewhat padded, doesn't break down in heat-slash-cold, scratch-resistant, recyclable, biodegradable and able to be assembled cheaply into any size. The basic design has existed for over 150 years. The retail shipping industry runs on cardboard boxes. And their factories are way more interesting than the slide factory or the toy factory. When can we see a finished box? We don't do that here. They're assembled in Flint, Michigan. Road reflectors, countless lives saved. Similarly, rumble strips. On the shoulders and in the center. I'm sure they've saved my dad's life many times over. Without them blind people wouldn't be able to drive. Metal pencil sharpeners, the manual kind, not electric. Don't buy the plastic ones in the school supply section. Go to the art section. Those metal sharpeners are choice. I have a Blackwing two-stage sharpener, I could do surgery with a pencil sharpen with it. The ballpoint pen, clearly. Give credit to the inventor, Laszlo Biro. He escaped the Nazis, invented the pen, then got ripped off and never made money. So that's the reason why it is called Biro in English. The aluminium beverage can. Serious upgrade when they engineered the pop top to remain with the can. I remember with the zip top cans, a lot of people would put the sharp metal zip piece back into the full can. Some people accidentally swallowed those and needed to be rushed to the ER. Batteries are marvels of engineering packed tightly into a minuscule canister, even AA batteries are incredibly sophisticated internally. I saw a video of someone take apart a lithium energizer battery the other day and it looks like cotton balls and folded foil just all jammed together. Like someone figured out how to harness so much energy into that thing? Edit, this is my most popular comment. It's me admitting that I can barely tie my shoes, and here are people just casually throwing atoms together to make my car go zoom. I saw the same video, it just looked like two sheets of different material wrapped into a spiral and shoved into a tiny cylinder. To a layman, it looks so simple in terms of the physical parts, but I'm sure there's a lot more going on there. That's actually pretty much it as far as how it's constructed. The magic is in the materials. The zipper. It's a very cheap mechanism that secures objects in a very neat fashion. No wonder it's used in most objects that need to be opened and closed such as luggage and jackets. But why is it still so easy to tell a quality zipper from a cheap one? Some are a delight to use while others feel cheap and constantly get jammed. LEDs. Cheap diodes. Even colors. Okay, I dislike the blue ones, but tint them and you get warm white. Blue LEDs are a Nobel Prize winning invention for how revolutionary they have been in lighting. Gallium nitride is making waves again for being super efficient. 
you'll see plenty of tiny USB chargers that produce almost no heat. It is also resistant to high heat areas like engine bays. Thanks for viewing. In the comments below the video, you can write what a cheap and mass-produced item is extremely well-designed.